Hello, everyone. Wow. It seems I'm on, so I can even say you completely turned me on. <laughs> um, my name is uh, Petr Strakos. I'm from uh, uh, IT for Innovations, National Supercomputing Center uh, in the Czech Republic. Uh, we are part of uh, Technical University of Ostrava. And the topic I would like to present today is about trains, or sp more specifically about um, simulating the environment uh, around the train. And it's part of a bigger project which uh, we participate on with uh, private company Experta. And this project was uh, also supported by a technology agency of uh, Czech Republic. And before I move on, I would also uh, express credits to all my colleagues which cooperate on this project, specifically to Kjati Setia, uh, Marta Jaroš, uh, Standa Bem, Aleno Ješko, who uh, did mainly the implementation work, also to Milan Jaroš for his support in the uh, area of rendering, and also uh, to the guys from Experta company, namely uh, Tomáš Kulich and Petri Allen, uh, for their work on 3D assets and for their uh, valuable ideas uh, regarding the design of the whole thing. As I said, uh, the topic of this talk, or specifically the Software Simulator is part of a bigger project. And it can be said that this project has three main activities. First one is uh, development of a working sample of a rail rail vehicle uh, that would be able to capture uh, uh, data during its journey. Uh, second task is uh, creation of an obstacle detection system uh, that could be then used uh, in a real train. And the third, but uh, last, and but not least, is the development of a software simulator uh, that uh, would be capable of generating training and validation data that could be then used uh, for the development of an obstacle detection system. To have an idea about um, how it might look at the end, uh, you can see the video, but let's move on. Uh, the talk is about the software simulator we have been developing. So as for this task, uh, we focused mainly on uh, several things. Uh, we were about to uh, create a, a software that will be capable of generating virtual data from railway track. Uh, such data uh, should be then used uh, to support the creation of an obstacle detection system that would then serve in a real train. Uh, we should allow within the simulator to simulate different critical scenarios uh, under different conditions. And we should also ensure quite high variability of uh, the outputs uh, but on the other hand, uh, try to limit the complexity of, of the simulator. So what was our goal? Basically, our goal was uh, to create a 3D environment of a rail rail track as a virtual replica of a real track. Uh, the outputs from the such simulator uh, should be of high quality, and we should allow uh, to simulate various sensors uh, similar to those uh, that are being used on uh, that working sample which I was mentioning uh, at the beginning. So what was the tool or what specific tool uh, we were deciding uh, at the beginning of, uh, of the development of the simulator? Uh, of course, we were uh, deciding or considering uh, uh, some game engines, uh, like engine or game engine number one and number two, you can substitute based on your preference. Uh, we were also uh, thinking about 
using Blender for the whole, uh, whole development. And we stick with Blender. Uh, we decided to use Blender for our, uh, the whole task, and mainly because we already had some past experience with Blender. We did some development. We also cooperated with Blender Institute. And uh, we have, most importantly, supercomputer available for generating uh, the valuable outputs. And we also have developed, uh, we call it rendering as a service. Basically, it's a modified version of a Cycles Renderer, which we can uh, effectively uh, use on the whole cluster and do the rendering uh, using cluster. So that was uh, uh, the main motivation uh, to use Blender. And now to uh, the job. Uh, basically, uh, what's inside? Uh, what's the design of the simulator? Uh, since it was supposed to provide kind of virtual replica of some specific uh, uh, part of the terrain, uh, in the Czech Republic. So we try to use as much digital data available as possible. So uh, in the simulator, we are using ultimate three rasters. Uh, we are also using uh, vegetation rasters from OpenStreetMaps to populate the vegetation on the terrain. And as for the uh, path of the tracks and all the roads, we are also using GeoJSON, uh, again, from OpenStreetMaps. Another important uh, part of the simulator uh, worth to mention uh, are the 3D assets. Thanks to a uh, very talented modeler we have in the team, uh, we have, I have to say, really nice assets available. Uh, those assets are very specific because we are in, let's say, railway uh, problem. So it was necessary to create basically all of them. Uh, as for the vegetation, uh, we cooperate with Polygonic, and we have very nice assets as well regarding the vegetation. Uh, for the user, it is important to have enough ability to um, decide what should appear in the scene, uh, what should be, this, let's say, the final scenario that is being, or that is going to be generated. Uh, so we have created uh, such a simple system that operates with a JSON file, and basically it captures all the high-level information about the scene. So this is uh, at the input. So basically, uh, we use that uh, information from the JSON file that uh, tells uh, the simulator uh, what kind of track is going to be generated, uh, what's going to be the data used for uh, generating the train, and so on and so on. What's going to be, for example, the uh, exact uh, time and date uh, that is going to be generated and these data are then interconnected with, or this information is that then interconnected with the real data. And this is then uh, processed within the add-on, uh, which we have created. Uh, we fully utilize uh, Python API. We have created our own UI for the whole simulator, and we process all the input data to reach the final goal of uh, generating the virtual replica of uh, some piece of the track. And uh, as I said, we mainly uh, aim to get uh, specific outputs from the simulator. They're, they are mainly uh, image-based, so we use cycles as a renderer to get the outputs. Here you can see the outputs we are trying to generate. Um, and here uh, I put uh, these labels to 
basically distinguish or tell you that uh, those specific outputs are uh, further, proce further processed uh, on the way uh, after uh, rendering all the necessary buffers which we work with. So basically, the LiDAR, uh, the GPS position, and infrared camera are further processed based on the inputs from the cycles render. Uh, here is a short showcase uh, of uh, how we populate or how we can work with the simulator. You can even see the scale of the generated uh, piece of the track. Uh, it's about four times four kilometers. And in this uh, showcase, you can see how we uh, work or let user work with the vegetation. The vegetation is being populated using geometry nodes. Uh, we use also some kind of optimization prior to rendering. We do cull the vegetation, so basically what is not necessary to uh, populate in the scene is not being populated to reduce the load. And user also can uh, manually enhance the scene by some manual modifications. Another important aspect, uh, possibility for the user to add the objects. We basically distinguish between two types of objects, either static or we used to call them dynamic, but it would be more precise to call them tweakable objects. Here you can see the showcase, uh, how you can easily populate with the static object, similar goes to the dynamic objects. And after you populate the scene, based on your preference, you can then save the whole scenario in the JSON file. So next time you use the simulator, you can generate the whole scene again based on the description from the JSON file. Here are already some showcases from the simulator. Uh, we uh, are able to generate different uh, seasons, mainly because uh, of uh, different vegetation assets. So, yeah, I think you all can recognize spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Uh, we are still working on it, but uh, I think it looks quite nice as the first approach. Okay. Uh, we are also able to uh, generate the night scenes or uh, the scene and simulate uh, the nighttime in the scene. Uh, from left to right, top to bottom, uh, you can see the, we call it, classical RGB output, camera output, uh, then uh, ground through, very important for uh, training of the detection system, then the depth map, and the last one is LiDAR. Uh, another very important aspect uh, of the simulator, or what was required, uh, in the simulator uh, was the ability to interact with different kind of objects, uh, which is very typical when you uh, uh, drive the train on the rails. Uh, it's uh, interaction with the cars. So here is a scenario with the cars. And another important possibility is to uh, generate the scene with some people in it and uh, their interaction in front of the train. So again, uh, same kind of outputs, uh, camera output, ground through, uh, depth image, and uh, generated LiDAR signal.
Yeah, we were, we were playing a bit with this. <laughs> And here is the comparison uh, between the uh, real footage and the simulated one. Let's say some intermediate approach. It's not uh, completely the same, but we try to do the best. And as I said at the beginning, uh, the outputs of the simulator uh, should serve uh, as either training data or validation data uh, for uh, the obstacle detection system. So here you can see uh, from those three different scenes application of the detection system on uh, simulated data. So what is important uh, that the detection system is able to detect uh, the most important objects on the track, such as cars, people. And what was surprising for us, even that horse during that night scene. And because this uh, kind of uh, simulation of quite large piece of the terrain uh, is Precious on one side, that you can basically create virtual replica of uh, uh, real terrain. But on the other hand, it's not that flexible. For example, when you uh, want to really quickly create a much smaller part of the terrain uh, and, let's say, create kind of weird stuff on it. Uh, so we decided to uh, create also a smaller or in terms of the size of the terrain, smaller version of uh, the simulator, uh, which is completely based on geometry nodes. And what you are about to see is kind of promo video of uh, this tool. So it's with the sound, so enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. That's about it. <laughs>